Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is the restaurant table booking app video series part 2. In this video, we are going to see the database design. So I am going to walk you through the number of tables that we will be using for this database and how they relate to each other. Alright, come, let's get started. So the screen that you are seeing is my Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio and I am using 2018. You can use whichever studio you have or uh, if you are using the Azure uh, SQL database using a different ID that's also fine but let's say you are using this and I will show you how beautiful it is and how easy it is to do certain things. In this first I'm going to show you the tables and I will also explain you how the columns are assigned to each tables and how they relate to each other okay. I already have a database that I have created and that's called as restaurant table booking and you can see here to the left hand side there are number of tables the six tables okay and uh, I'll show you how they are related but let's open a new query window so you click on any of the database or the database at the high level here do a control N will open up a new query window and this query window will have a connection to whichever connection you have done right so you click on this connect and do a connect database engine and once you're there right so you can you can either use any of the database or just open a blank new screen now here what I'm going to do is if you go to the top under the file there are a couple of options menu options right so under query there's something called design query in editor once you click that, based on the database selection, it will populate all the tables here. Here I am going to select all the tables and click on add and that will add to the query designer. Okay, So instead of going one by one, this will be uh, much easy and uh, it will be easy to understand. So this query designer will have three parts. One is the visual design. The second one is the filter stuff and the third one is the actual query that gets generated based on what you are doing here. Right, so let's rearrange this. So, what we have to do is we will have something called restaurant first, right? So, we will have let, let's make this big so that we will be able to fit almost everything. So, the first one is the restaurant followed by the restaurant branch. Okay, okay, so let's see how it goes. So, restaurant, so I'm going to expand this restaurant. And then one restaurant will have number of branch. So that's why the second table is restaurant branch. And now the restaurant branch will have a couple of things. So they have something called slot, time slot. They have something called dining tables. Okay. And let's keep it good. So you know how they are related. Okay. So, all right. See, these are the six simple tables, right? So let's go one by one. There is a table called restaurant. We will have a columns called name, address, the phone number, email, and the image of the restaurant. Okay, this is the primary table. Primary table means every single restaurant details that you have it in this table will be unique. Only one restaurant should be there. Duplicate should not be there. But if you consider a McDonald's or Starbucks or any any restaurant that have multiple branches, right? So based on the branches, the branches will come to the restaurant branch table. So the second table will have a reference to the first table. That's why it's called reference called a restaurant ID. And then the branch also will have its name, its address, phone number, email and its own images. Right. So that's why this table will have all these things. Along with that, there is an extra column called restaurant ID. Now, if you're new to this database, this is how it works, right? The ID column on the table, they are primarily called a primary key. So they, we will have a primary key added to this one of the column and that column is unique. In our case, the ID column is basically an integer column and we have an identity set to one comma one, which means every single record that you insert into this table will be automatically populated with a number with an increment of one. So one, two, three, four, it goes until the end of the integer value, right? Int means int power two power 32. So that's such a big number. Okay. The next big number is big int, but let's stay focused on this. Now on the second table, this column, the, the restaurant ID is called foreign key. 
what is foreign key basically foreign key means there is some parent to a to a particular uh, record and that record will be a primary key column which is why in this table whichever the primary key right that will become a foreign key in this one on the child table so this is a parent table this is a child table and restaurant id here is called a foreign key and its own the actual id which is present in this table they are called primary key okay so if you're new to this database this is how uh, this is what called the primary key and the foreign key concept great now each restaurant will have uh, the dining tables for people to come and have their food or have their meal right so that's why we have a table called dining table now based on the restaurant each restaurant will have you know four tables five tables or if the restaurant is very big it could have 20 tables 30 tables all depends on the size of the restaurant now each branch will have its own capacity and the seat name so here we have three columns called branch id the seat name and the capacity okay now in this one if you look at this right this id is the primary key this is nothing but restaurant branch right now this id became a foreign key to a third table and this is a child table so this table dining table is a child table of the restaurant branch table okay that's why the primary key which is id now it has become a branch id ideally it should have been named as restaurant branch id just for the understanding purpose like how we named that restaurant restaurant id so here restaurant branch id instead of branch id but that's fine so you as long as you understand that's fine so this is a foreign key this is a foreign key relationship okay now it has different tables each table is we are going to name it as a funny name or a, you know a interesting name that's why i have a property called uh, a column called seat name and each table the table is represented as seat name here they will have a number of capacity if they have a small table maybe two people big table four people six people right now we will stick to each table will have two people accommodated right that will be the maximum accommodated so if four people come probably restaurant will join two tables and become a, a seat for four table four people okay we're going to keep as simple as possible and it's not complicate this application right now you understood the third table now the fourth table is the time slots so what does time slots a restaurant can be serving a food for breakfast lunch and dinner or maybe some other party time or something right so assumption is this time slot will have breakfast time 7 a.m to 11 a.m and then followed by 12 p.m to 3 p.m followed by that will be the lunch and then the dinner will be like from 6 p.m to 11 p.m okay based on each branch we will have so the meal type is the three types breakfast lunch and you know dinner maybe if something else come we can add it all right and what we are going to do in this time slot uh, table is for each branch that's why there's a branch id see very good see we have two foreign key relationships so there are two childs for this table that's why branch id branch id is here right so this branch id is the foreign key of this primary key okay now if you look at the other three columns reservation day meal type table status so idea behind this application is there will be a background job which will insert number of records here okay um, basically it will insert on a particular day there are like let's say this table this uh, restaurant has um, you know two tables let's keep it simple one of the branch has two tables now the background job will go and insert for a particular day morning two tables so the the meal type will be like breakfast two tables will come afternoon which is dinner and then followed by the sorry lunch and the dinner so there will be six record for a particular branch on a particular day if all the tables are available for all the times right now this will become the reservations thing so when user comes and do a reservation they will select a particular restaurant followed by the branch and then they will pick up a time slot and a table will be assigned here okay so that's the idea of the reservation table 
okay and then this table is nothing but uh, the user table basically we will be using the user table to have the bare minimum information email first name last name and ad object id is something that once we do an authentication authorization if the user signs in we will use this ad object id to store their uh, active directory object id if not they're considered as a guest we just need the email address for us to send an email through the send grid okay but for other users like employees and admins definitely we will have the ad object id populated because they will eventually log in all right so we saw this one and i'm gonna show you i'm gonna close this and show you how it looks in the uh, the query all right so whatever i was explaining you right so this is how the table script will have so it's a restaurant i said the id is the primary key right so we we name this as an integer and a keyword called primary key which will make this column data unique and identity is the auto population of the data okay if you specify 1 comma 100 then the, in, the difference between each record will be 100 but let's stick to 1 comma 1 okay we don't want such thing so restaurant branches we just explained you everything and here's the thing i was talking about the foreign key right and uh, this is how the foreign key relationship will work so we will add a constraint and we will say the constraint name it's good to have the constraint name so that random name will not be created during the database creation so we will say constraint a constraint name and then a foreign key keyword followed by we will say who is the foreign key here in our case this column is a foreign key that also should be integer okay this this one and the primary key should match referencing the table and its primary key so foreign key column of this table which is we are making as foreign key foreign key and then we are referencing the main table and its primary key all right so this is the same concept for the dining table and the time slots and then finally users and reservation so in reservation because the time table id time slot id and user id are coming from three different tables we will have three foreign key added to these three columns all right so this is the uh, table that we will do and like i said i'm going to insert some some sample data so we're inserting some some restaurant in the restaurant table and this awesome restaurant will have six branches we named as branch a b c d e it has its own details and then we are going to simulate like we have some 10 users okay and then if you look at this dining table this is what i was talking about we're saying branch one has four tables we are going to name them each of the table very funny like Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Hulk, right? Like a theme based table. Okay. And then we're saying capacities too. So for an Iron Man table for a given branch, we have two people can sit in this table. Okay. Like that, I'm going to insert for branch B, branch C, branch D. And then finally, we are going to mimic uh, the time slots. So for a branch one, like I said, on a particular date, which is the future date, they have those four tables allocated for breakfast and right now it's available because no one booked it. Similarly, lunch and dinner. Similarly, for all the branches, we will have this dummy data, right? The, the, the real data, basically. Based on these data, if user books a reservation, finally, we will see the reservation. So this is the next set of script that I'm going to give us the data that mimicking that the user is booking as well, the, the table. All right, so now let's run some query which will show us a nice thing. So I'm going to select this, Control X will execute this. And if you look at this, here you go. So the, the, the last one that you're seeing is the slots. So we are saying branch this, this first branch, right? Have four, four tables and they are located four tables for breakfast, lunch, dinner and all are available and few things are booked. That's why they are changed as booking and whichever is booked is changed as booked, right? So similarly, you can see what is available, what is not available. And similarly, you can also see based on the data, the sample data that we inserted, this John, Jean and Mike have booked these tables on these branches on these dates for breakfast, lunch, dinner randomly, right? So we are just mimicked and we are going to do these things from the UI or even from our API, okay? Now this is the database design. I hope you understand and you enjoy this. Uh, 
and uh, if you have any more questions related to a specific uh, table design or anything do let me know in the comment section and uh, i hope even if you are new to this database design you know how this tables are created how you can relate the tables through the query editor and uh, you can insert the data right so we know about the primary key foreign key some default constraints you know creating a table database and all those things so i'll give you the script in the github repository as a startup under the part 2 you can if you're following this video series after the architecture this is the second one so go run this script and have the database and script ready all right thank you i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding